Good morning, STN. I'm McKenna Milligan. And I'm Tyler Carr. You're watching WCAC in Anaheim, California. We are so stoked to be in Anaheim, California, participating in the 14th annual STN convention. Students travel from across the globe to compete and create in a four-day long festival, hoping to be recognized on a national level. This year, STN is being held in the most populated city in Orange County, and it stretches from the city of Cypress on the east all the way to Riverside County on the west. Anaheim is known for its many tourist attractions, including the Anaheim Garden Walk, American Sports Center, and of course, Disneyland. Disneyland employs over 22,000 people and contributes $4.7 billion annually to the economy of Southern California. Even though Disneyland has shaped the city into what it is today, there are still many other sides of Anaheim that have been ignored. Outside of the gates of Disneyland, one might find the city might not be so magical. Recent studies have shown that in 2015, 21.5% of the population fell below poverty level, and in the last year, over 1,200 violent crimes were recorded in Anaheim. One location that might not be on the top 10 tourist attractions list is the Voice of Refugees organization. This faith-based nonprofit has helped refugees reestablish their lives in a new country. Refugees perfect their English in weekly classes and learn about American culture. Nations call a refugee someone who, owing to a well-founded fear of being persecuted for reasons of race, religion, nationality, or membership of a particular social group or political opinion. Refugees have spent many years of their life in seeking refuge after leaving their country. We spoke to Louise Oasis about how she became a citizen after being a refugee. I'm Louise Oasis. Um, um, I recently emigrated 10 months ago from Jordan and uh, uh, it took me like about uh, 13 years to get here, to get my green card and my family too. The Voice of Refugees is located in Anaheim, California and is a safe place for any refugees who need some help to get back on their feet. Staff member Ryan Clark spoke to us about why refugees come to VOR. And inside the Arab Middle Eastern community, there's a lot of refugees. So in the last 30 years, Lebanon, Palestine, Iraq, Syria, they've all had crises and a lot of people will come here because there's Arabic markets that have their food and spices, there's restaurants and there's family and friends, so there's a community to, uh, that's familiar to them. When they come here, they feel like they, they find a new family. A new country for them, you know? America has one promise. Give me your tired, your poor, and Anaheim still holds these virtues true with the assistance of the refugees in need. Now back to your anchors. Like every city, Anaheim does have its problems. But it's still enriched with local family businesses. Joe's Italian Ice is one of the sweetest locations outside of Disneyland where families can enjoy a high quality dessert. Joe's combination of delicious treats and an enthusiastic team makes Joe's Italian Ice a popular stop in Anaheim. Disney isn't the only place to find fun and joy in Anaheim. When you're working with who you love and doing what you love, joy can be found almost anywhere. In the heart of Anaheim is a place that's a little unique from its community. Something that's really unique about Joe's is that um, when Joe uh, hires people, he needs you, they, you need to be outgoing and you need to be very like, loud and talkative. and like. You also, when you get hired, you need to come in with jokes, so you need to be more like out, like outgoing and funny. You will quickly find out that this is like no other place you've been before, and all it takes is one bite. All it takes is one taste to realize why, what sets Joe's apart. What makes it different is that they're all my recipes. I created them, and they are only served at my place. The other thing that sets it apart beyond any other Italian ice place around is that we use real fruit. Most people use a syrup. And, and so when you, when you order my watermelon and lemon and limes, etc., you're going to feel like you're biting into a real watermelon. Another thing that helps Joe's to stand out is its vast collection of antiques. A collection that he says we only get a sneak peek of. I have liked vintage things my whole life. From the time I was 10 years old, I started collecting antiques. And so this is just 
a culmination of collections that I've accumulated over the years. Reporting for STN, this has been Brandon Almeida, Brett Bigelow, Emil Whitaker, Madison Glynn, Mason Carruthers, and Caden Danley. Now back to the anchors. We'll be right back. Jammed in between tourist attractions and hotels, Anaheim currently has four different community gardens. These gardens are located in abandoned plots and encourage a healthy lifestyle. Here's a spotlight on one of Anaheim's community gardens. Every morning, most of us wake up, we have breakfast, and we go to school with a full stomach. But this isn't a privilege that everyone has. Los Angeles and its surrounding area has the highest homeless population of any other city in the nation. This means that every night thousands of people go to sleep without having a meal. At least that was before the community garden. On the outskirts of LA, Anaheim sees millions of tourists every year. But when you look past the Mickey Mouse ears and the Harry Potter wands, Anaheim has its fair share of problems. One of which is poverty. Food is essential for life, but when families can't afford the grocery store, the community garden is there as an alternative source. That's not the only reason the community needs wigwag. The garden is a refuge from the streets. It provides support and environmental education for low-income families. We spoke with Dee Luna, who volunteers and helps keep the garden in tip-top shape. She understands the importance and impact the garden has on the community. I think it brings people together. Uh, it's fun to start to grow something and then and then you watch it grow and then you're able to harvest it and I think that's good we see us grow our own fruits and vegetables and uh, some flowers we have and we have some people plant cactus but uh, we have cleanup days and other things that where we get more people together. Anaheim isn't always glamorous, and it certainly has its fair share of problems, but helping others isn't one of them. Wigwag brings a struggling neighborhood together to help end hunger in their little community. This has been Caitlin Dickey, Lexi Smith, Elise Alexander, and Raylan Trell reporting for SDN. That's all the news we have for you today. Once again, I'm McKenna Milligan. And I'm Tyler Carr. Have a great week, STN, and like always, Go, go Cats! Cats.